In the year 2100, Earth stood on the edge of exhaustion. Oceans rose, forests fell, cities crumbled under the weight of billions. The stars above whispered a choice, stay and perish, or journey and survive. From the ashes of a dying world, humanity built its greatest hope, the Odyssey, a ship like no other. Three kilometers wide, carrying forests, rivers, entire nations within its walls. Powered by fusion cores hotter than the sun, shielded by nanotech armor stronger than diamond. A spinning world, designed to sail across the dark between the stars, toward a dream 1,400 light years away. Kepler, 25,000 souls climbed aboard. Scientists, engineers, farmers, dreamers, children clutching stuffed animals, old poets gripping leather journals. Everyone carried something irreplaceable, the memory of Earth. The Odyssey ignited. With a roar that shook the heavens, it left orbit, carving a trail of fire through the night sky. Acceleration was slow but relentless, 0.5 gigabytes, one gigabyte. Two years later, the ship cruised at 10% the speed of light. There was no turning back. Inside the Odyssey, life blossomed. Artificial gravity spun underfoot. Sunlight simulated by quantum projectors poured down onto farmlands stretching toward the horizon curved walls. Rivers flowed across the landscape, feeding engineered forests designed to last a thousand years. Birds sang in the arboretum domes. Children chased butterflies born in orbit. Life found a way. The stars outside were cold and endless, but inside, humanity thrived. Decades passed. The first ship-born generation took their first steps on soil they had never seen planted. They never knew Earth's blue skies. Their sky was the inner curve of the ship. Their world was a spinning ring inside a cosmic cathedral. New traditions rose, new languages evolved. Families told tales of Earth the way ancient sailors once spoke of Atlantis. Half memory, half legend. By year 150, Earth's voice faded into silence. No signals crossed the void anymore. Humanity was alone, and yet somehow, more together than ever before. Threats came from within. Bacteria mutated, thriving in the closed ecosystems. Crop blights wiped out entire agricultural modules. Social tensions flared into rebellion among those who dreamed of controlling the Odyssey's destiny. The ship adapted. Nanobots learned to eliminate mutations at the molecular level. Psychological programs immersed citizens in virtual Earth landscapes to calm space madness. Rebellions were ended not by force, but by new governance, councils chosen by referendum every century. By year 500, humanity aboard the Odyssey had become something new, space-born, stronger, smarter, more united. At the halfway mark, the ship performed its great realignment. Rotational speeds were increased slightly to prepare bodies for Kepler's stronger gravity. The habitat rings were fortified. Terraforming drones were prepped for launch decades before arrival. The final century was a time of legends. Children trained in low-gravity martial arts. Biologists bred new species of crops that could survive alien atmospheres. Artists painted murals not of Earth, but of Kepler, imagined through telescopes from centuries past. Every soul aboard knew the dream was near. As the Odyssey approached Kepler, its scanners lit up with data. Atmosphere breathable with minor supplements. Water, abundant, pure. Land, fertile and rich. No intelligent life detected. A world waiting for a second chance at civilization. Year 1400. The Odyssey initiated deceleration. Plasma sails deployed like giant silver wings catching interstellar particles, slowing the ship after its 1,400-year flight. The ship shook, groaned, but held firm. The sky grew brighter. Kepler's sun filled the viewports. The planet loomed larger every day, a swirling mass of green and blue and cloud. Not alien, not strange, but somehow familiar. The first landing team, descendants of those who launched the mission centuries before, boarded surface shuttles. They carried the legacy seeds, Earth's final gift. Oak, pine, sequoia, wheat, 
corn, and flowers once thought extinct. The descent was rough. Storms raged across unfamiliar skies. Gravity pulled at their bones with a heaviness their ancestors never knew. But when the landing gear touched solid ground, a collective breath held for centuries was finally released. Boots pressed into alien soil. Hands scooped it up, rich, black, and full of life. A child born on the ship only eight years before took the first step beyond the landing ramp. In her hands, a tiny oak sapling. She knelt and planted it into the foreign earth. Tears streaked down faces hardened by generations of waiting. Above them, the Odyssey hung in orbit like a silver moon, its mission fulfilled. Kepler was no longer a dream. It was home. Humanity had crossed the abyss of space, carried by hope, science, and sheer stubborn will. And as the first trees of Earth grew roots into alien soil, a new chapter of history began. One not written in the dust of a dying planet, but carved into the fertile future of a new world. We were never meant to die on Earth. We were meant to reach the stars. And now, we have. <laughs>